Here's oh, something yeah. about Warrior uh, that that came up in your Herb Abrams podcast that we talked about a couple of weeks ago that people can look up on Rick's channel. Um, you mentioned in that during your talk about your altercation with uh, Paul Orndorff that everyone was talking about. It got like five thousand hits on my channel. That you also got into an altercation with Warrior, and in some of the comments, people were saying, "Could you please elaborate?" on this warrior confrontation that you had. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to. You know, it's funny, and I write about this in my book as well. I've had five near fights with famous pro wrestlers, and in every single case, the wrestler backed down. And I have to think of this. I don't think it's because they're afraid of me by any means. I think it's because they must have had a moment of clarity and like, wow, this guy is 5'4 and 135 pounds, and he's older than me. so. There's no upside in kicking his ass. I can only look like a fucking heel if I do. But God help me if he actually kicks my ass. It might end my career. Because back then, wrestlers were supposed to be tough. Um, so they all they all back down, Warrior being one of them. And what happened is years after he became famous as the old... Sting and I stayed in touch a little bit here and there, but really got back in touch. Warrior and I never spoke from the time we split up, I think it was 85, 86, whatever it was. And Warrior was very much the cause of power team breaking up. He instigated the whole thing. Steve Sting went along with it. Um, he didn't do it through bad intent. Warrior, in my mind, he was looking out for himself, and people do look out for themselves first. I understand that. But he absolutely screwed me in the process. There's no doubt about it. So now it's all these years later. And I'm at Gold's Gym in Venice, and I see Warrior. And he's, you know, mega famous as a pro wrestler at this point in time. But I'm like, in my mind, and I, this is pretty evolved if I say so myself for so long ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go say hi. There's nothing that can be fixed at this point. Let me be the bigger man here, metaphorically, of course, and, you know, try to, you know, patch things up if they need to be patched up. I don't know. I don't know what he thinks. Um I mean, maybe he thinks, hey, this guy started me and I made it on, made it big on his dime. So I'm going to be nice to him. I don't know what he thought of me. So I walk up to him. He's doing uh, very heavy barbell curls. And I'm like, hey, Jim. And he looks at me. And it was like the ultimate warrior inhabited Jim Helwig's body. He, just before the nut job legally changed his name to warrior. He we used to joke about this, but it was true. We laugh about it, not joke about it he would like get emotional and go from like flesh colored to yellow, to red, to purple, right in front of your eyes. I mean, it was pretty funny. And you start to sweat profusely and he became the ultimate warrior holding those barbells, that barbell. And he's like, Rick Bassman, you have the police chasing me. You have the FBI following me. And I'm standing there going, what? I didn't say anything. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. It was like, it was like the ravings of a, a lunatic. He goes, yeah, he goes, I should take this barbell and jam it right up your ass. So this is almost word for word what he said. And I remember I had pretty good presence of mind and I, I never reacted much to getting in a fight or nearly getting in a fight. So I remember this could be a pretty funny thing to say to him. And here's what I said. I took about one step back and I looked up at him and I said, Jim, I go, dude, you're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care. You know, the FBI, the police, let's move on to the barbell thing. I go, now we've all heard little rumors about you and putting things up guys' asses. I go, so if that's what you're thinking, I go, that's not going to happen either. That's on your own time. I go, but if you want, why don't you put that down so I can beat the fuck out of you right here at Gold's Gym Venice? And he started shaking. He slammed the barbell down on the ground, turned around. If you know Gold's Gym at all in Venice, there's a big main room. And then there's a couple other rooms behind it. They get smaller. He walked all the way through the gym and then just smashed open the back door in the small room and he was gone. And that's it. What do you think happened there? He he just didn't want to fight or he didn't want to lose? Or what, what was the thought I, I don't process? know. I think it's the same thing that all the guys thought, um, which is, you know, on the off chance in their mind that I beat them, that they would be hugely embarrassed and look terrible. 
And because again, my height, my size, my age, all that. Um, but on the other side, they beat me. How's that going to make them look? They, it was an absolute no win situation for them, put it that way. And I think he, he's not a dumb guy. So I mentioned he's a very, very intelligent guy, emotional for sure. But I guess he had the presence of mind to think that there really wasn't an upside in it. And, and Warrior to me, even though he was a million times stronger than I ever had any fantasy of being when it comes to pushing weights and that sort of thing, the guy had two left feet for sure. Um, I, I, of all the guys I almost got in fights with, he's one of the two I would have liked my chances against best for sure. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.